We're going to continue looking at great Bible events. So we're going to be in Joshua chapter 6. The last time we talked about Israel crossing over Jordan. And so now Israel has made it across Jordan. They've been waiting 40 long years to cross that river. And here they are. They've now crossed the river Jordan. And they've been preparing themselves spiritually. And so far they've been obeying God's orders to the very letter as they get across the river Jordan. And now they're ready to begin their conquest of the promised land. They're ready to claim for themselves this promised land of flowing with milk and honey. And however, though, when they look upon it, just like most things in our lives that are worth something to us, it was going to come with a cost, and it was going to come with some effort. Things that are worth worth while in our lives don't come cheap. To start off for Israel, it was going to be Jericho. Jericho was going to be their benchmark, the first city they were to take. It was there that they were going to be flexing their muscle to experience some military victory and conquest like none other before. Now I want you to take for just a moment and think about, put yourself in their shoes. You've been wandering the wilderness for 40 years. You've walked across this mighty river. And now you're looking upon a city, walled, solidly around it. Are you a a seasoned soldier? Have you been conquesting walled cities all your life? No, you've never done a city quite like this before. So you, you look, and it must have seemed somewhat formidable to see this large city with such a good fortification around it. May have even looked impossible to people in their own might. But however, the Israelite people listened to the instructions that were given to them by the Lord, and they saw those massive walls simply come tumbling down flat before their feet. You know, we live today in a day that's full of battles and struggles. We don't live easy lives. We don't live a life where Satan's been barred from it. We, we live a life in a, in a society, in a world that's full of Satan's influences. And we have to battle and struggle that day in and day out. And there's so many lessons we can learn from the experience of the Israelites here. You know, we need to know how to fight. We need to know that our God is able to give us a victory. We need to know how to follow Him and claim that victory that He has to offer to us. And Joshua here can teach us some of those lessons. You know, just as Israel faced the formidable walls of Jericho, you and I can face walls and obstacles in our lives, things that get in our way. And we need to know how to overcome them if we're going to march towards our victory. So our passage today is going to hold the answers for us today. It's going to tell us, just as it did for these Israelites so many years ago, it's going to teach us how to overcome the walls in our lives. Let's look at what Israel did to conquer Jericho and let's learn and let the Lord teach us how to bring down our walls. First, Israel here has a problem. In verse 1 we see, Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Here we see a great city shut up they walled themselves in because they, they had seen the Israelite people and knew they were coming in and heard about them. And they closed their gates and shut their walls. And in here you see a walled city where not just one wall, but this was two massive walls. There was the outer wall, which was six feet thick. Six feet thick. That's as tall as I am. That's, that's a pretty thick wall. Twenty feet high. And then they had an inner wall that was twelve feet thick and 30 feet high. And in between these two walls was a 15-foot section where the soldiers would keep a march and guard Jericho. This was a great fortified city. And as we go through our life, you know, we may see obstacles in our life too that may seem impossible to us. Something that might seem impossible to overcome. So 
sometimes it is different for everybody's life. Maybe it's the loss of a loved one in your life that you just can't get past. Or maybe you see salvation in someone that you think very undeserving because they are completely uncommitted to God, and that might be a stumbling block to you. Or perhaps you might have a ministry the Lord has placed upon your heart, but you feel completely inadequate to take care of it. All these different obstacles in our lives, maybe family problems, maybe financial difficulties, or maybe that nagging sin that's ingrained within you that you just can't seem to shake and crops up in your life every so often. All these things in our life. But to get over these things, we have to learn to look on these obstacles not as dead ends, not as great walls that we can't climb, but as an opportunity for the Lord to work in our lives, for the Lord to do something great within us. Yes, Israel had a problem, but Israel also had a promise. Verse 2 says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. The Lord said, See. He said, Look, it's already yours. I have given it into thine hand. He didn't say, I'm going to give it to you, or if you do this, you can have it. He says, I've given it to you. It's already yours. God promised them victory before they even started the battle. He's already said, it's yours. Do with it as you will. You know, we have the Lord's promises in our life, too, that we can use as banners as we struggle and as we battle the things in our life that need to be battled. We can raise that banner high, and, and the scriptures are full of promises that we can use in our lives as we struggle and as we fight the good fight. First of all, we have a promise that our weapons are powerful. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We have mighty, powerful weapons. We also have a promise that our battles have been arranged by the Lord. I talked about that this morning in the devotional, how the Lord goes before us and prepares the way for us. In 2 Corinthians 4.17, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. God has put those before us and has already worked them out and prearranged them to our benefit. We also have a promise of the power in the day of battle. When the day comes, if we'll stand firm in the Lord, we're promised of power in that day. Ephesians 6, 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. For the Lord is mighty. You know, we have that promise. If we'll just look to Him as we, do, as we face these battles, as we face these struggles in our lives. And we have a promise of an ongoing victory. The victory isn't over at the single battle, but God promises us a continual, ongoing victory in 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because we believe and we follow a risen Savior, we don't believe and follow a, a man who's dead and been buried. We don't follow a God that can be unknown. We follow a known, living God and is continual. And in that, we can find that promise of an ongoing victory. We have the promise that we will never fight alone. God will never leave us alone in our battles. Matthew 28, 20 says, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. As long as there's people living on this earth, until Christ comes again and, and establishes His millennial kingdom, He's going to be with us, always. And we can count on that. We have the promise that when the battles are ended, we're going to celebrate the victory in His presence. When it's all over, when we fought the good fight, and it's time to celebrate, and it's time to, you see the, the marching in of the victorious army, we're going to be there with him. And we're going to celebrate it in his presence. John 14, 1, 3 tells us, Let not your heart be troubled. Yes, troublesome times are going to come. Yes, battles are going to be placed before you. There may be walls, there may be stumbling blocks, there may be mighty towers in front of us. But it says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. 
In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. We can be with him again. And as we celebrate the wonderful triumph, the wonderful victory in Jesus Christ, and as we face these walled cities in our lives, we need to learn to take God at his word and trust him for our victories. Trust him for our victories. You know, Israel had a problem. Israel had a promise. But Israel also had a partner. Verses 3 through 5 says, And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And the seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. They had a wonderful partner. Israel had a partner in God. God himself was there to help them fight their battle. I like what it says there at the end of of verse 5. If you understand, if you ever, those who like to watch war movies and and the old time war movies where the medieval soldiers are encompassing a castle and they're they're able to make, break a hole in the wall, but then all the soldiers have to file through that hole to go besiege the city. And a lot of them die as they're coming through those holes. A lot of them get shot with arrows or stabbed with swords, whatever it is. But here, if you look at the end of verse 5, it says, The city walls shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. So there wasn't just going to be a hole in the wall. The whole wall was going to come down, and every man where he stood, they weren't going to have to go find where the hole was in the wall. Every man where he stood was going to be able to turn straight to the city and go right up into it. And just take it. That is the power of God. That is what happens when you have God as your partner in your battles. God doesn't just give you a minute. He takes the mile and He gives it all to you. And He's going to be there for you. You know, God is their partner. We saw before, if you flip back a little bit into the last few verses of chapter 5, starting in verse 13, it says, And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. We see when, when, the Lord, when the captain of the hosts of the Lord came unto him, he didn't come as an advisor. He didn't come as, as a servant to Joshua. He came to take control. He came to be in charge of the battle. The Lord is in charge of the battle. And we need to remember if we are to be victorious in our battles, if we want to win the victory when walls are put in front of us, When struggles and trials come our way, we need to know who's in control. And it's not us. It's not us. Our victory is in Jesus. Our victory is not going to be in our way, and it's not going to be in our power. It's going to be in God and God alone. And that's what we need to remember here. You know, we do not face our obstacles alone. Just like the Israelites had God on their side, we too have God on our side. We don't face our struggles. We don't face our obstacles alone. And no obstacle is going to be insurmountable to us as long as we face it with the Lord, as long as we face it with God, and as long as we face it with His weapons. God has armed us with some mighty powerful weapons, and we need to learn to use them. We need to learn to use them, and we need to learn to use them now. He's given us the Word of God sharper than any two-edged sword. And it will stand beside us in any struggle. And it will help us in any struggle. 
But just like a soldier, we need to learn to use it now. You don't send a soldier into battle and the first day on the front line hand him a new weapon that he's never seen before. That he hasn't that he doesn't know inside and out. When you, when you send people to train in the armed forces of the, of the United States, they have to take that weapon apart, clean it. They know it inside and out before they ever go to the battlefront. We should do the same with our with this two edged sword we have in our hands. We should know it inside and out as we go to the battlefront. And the Lord also gives us another mighty weapon in prayer. Never underestimate the power of prayer in your life. It, just words aren't enough to express what prayer can do for you if you'll let it in your life. And even just the, the littlest thing, I try and teach this to, my, to the youth group on Wednesday nights, but it doesn't matter how small it is. God wants to help you. You know, sometimes we go to our parents and we don't need a lot of help. But we need just a little bit of help. God is our Father in Heaven. Even if we just need that little bit of help, He wants to help us. He wants to be there for us. And if we'll use that weapon of prayer in those little times, it will be that much better and that much more effective in the big times. So we need to exercise and use that powerful weapon of prayer that we have that God has given us. Because, you know, we may have some problems, just like Israel did. But we have promises just like Israel did. We've got a partner in God just like Israel did. And so therefore, just as Israel prevailed, we too can prevail. Israel prevailed in this battle. If we look, starting in verse 6, and if you'll bear with me, I'm going to read a little bit more of this chapter now so we can see how they won this battle. And it says, starting in verse 6, And Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests, and said unto them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on, and compass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the Ark of the Lord. And it came to pass, when Joshua had spoken unto the people, that the seven priests, bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horn, passed on before the Lord, and blew with the trumpets. And the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men went before the priests to blew with the trumpets. And the rear reward came after the ark, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth, until the day I bid you shout, then shall ye shout. Can you imagine how difficult that would have been? You're marching around this huge walled city and you're not supposed to say a word. You're not supposed to turn to your partner saying, Man, look how tall these walls are. How do you think we're going to do this? No, they were quiet and silent as they marched around. It, it, it's just amazing to me to know that it said that they did so. We know they did so because they got the promise that God gave them. If they were to do what they were told to do, God promised them the victory. They got the victory, so we know they did as God told them to do. It said, So the ark of the Lord compassed the city going about it once. And they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose up early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. And seven priests, bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord, went on continually and blew with the trumpets. And the armed men went before them. But the rear reward came after the ark of the Lord. The priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they compassed the city once and returned into the camp. So they did six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. And the city shall be accursed, even it, and all that are therein, to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she had hid the messengers that we sent. And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed, when ye take of the accursed thing, and make the camp of Israel a curse, and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are 
are consecrated unto the Lord, they shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpet, and it came to pass, when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep and ass with the edge of the sword. They took the city. Why was it they were so successful in taking this fortified city? What made it so... It, it seemed like such an uh, impossible task. But when you read it, it almost seems like it was too easy. Why, why is that? Why was it so easy? Why were they able to prevail in such a, a dominating manner? The answer to that is simple. Because the Lord had promised them they would. And because they believed... God, when He promised them that they would. When God gives you a promise, you have to believe that promise. And you have to act in faith, as these Israelites did. The Lord gave them a promise, and they in faith did exactly as He asked them to do. And because of that, they prevailed in their victory. They did it God's way. You know, if you go talk to any general in the Americans today, they probably wouldn't tell you that's the best way to take a walled city, is to march around it and blow trumpets. It seems strange. Sometimes the things God asks us to do seem strange. But they didn't question what God had asked them to do. They simply did it God's way. And because of that, God gave them the victory. And that's a lesson we can learn in our lives. God's people will prevail. God's people will have a victory. But we have to do it God's way. We have to do it in faith the way God asks us to do it. So you can ask yourself today, what kind of walled city is before you? What kind of obstacles stand in your way? Do they seem unsurmountable? Do they seem unconquerable to you? Do the walls look too high? Do they look too thick? Is there a problem that you're just battling over and don't think you can overcome? Does it look like maybe it's an impossible victory for you? If that's the case, we just simply need to remember that with God we can bring down our walls. We can bring down the walls of those, those obstacles. They can fall where they stand right now, right here. The moment you turn it over to God, the moment you let Him take over in your life, then that's the moment those walls will fall. And we can take a lesson from Israel and start handling our Jericho the way they did, in faith, trusting in the promise of God, and do it His way and not our way. Let's stand. Let's be dismissed in a word of prayer.